moon is a very important planet that we all know and uh, in this video i am going to talk about some of uh, dimensions of moon which is not understood properly with respect to moon combinations right and the major moon combination which we have to look for and this is a speciality with both moon and sun is on the two sides of these luminaries right both the sides of these luminaries right so moon second to moon 12th to moon this becomes very important this is very important right these luminaries are planets who are the basic producers of light have to be powerful in horoscope otherwise the light is not reaching the native and uh, as we are talking of astrology which is uh, about luck fate and divinity the light of the planets not reaching the native when he was born obstructs the luck fortune and the blessings of divinity to the native this happens when the sun and moon are uh, weak this is the particular reason it is told in classics that if sun or the moon is weak it destroys many of the raja yogas or good authoritative comfort leading success combinations in the horoscope regarding moon planet in second house from moon makes a sunapha yoga planet in 12th house from moon makes anapha yoga planet in both sides of moon makes durudhara yoga and planet on neither sides of moon makes kemadrum yoga today we are going to understand this sunapha anapha durudhara these three words don't have an exact meaning as such and they have to be understood according to our own logic coming to the first thing sunapha yoga which happens with a which is made when a particular planet is situated in second to moon and here we are talking of normal planets excluding the shadowy planets and excluding the luminaries right so the basic point is venus mercury mars jupiter or saturn situated in second house to moon makes anapha yoga situated in 12th house to moon makes sorry situated in second house to moon makes sunapha yoga situated in 12th house to moon makes anapha yoga and situated on both sides of moon makes durudhara yoga the placement of sun rahu and ketu on the second to moon 12th to moon is not considered right so if you have sun rahu or ketu in these houses these yogas are not made now this sunapha yoga and this anapha yoga both is considered good yoga and either there are malefic planets in these houses or or benefic planets in these houses it does not matter it constitutes in a good combination only see the second house and the 12th house is the basic support for any planet or for any house second house is the future path and 12th house is the support on which the planet or the house or for that matter any factor is resting on now the basic point that i want to cover in this video is not these not the sunapha or anapha uh, uh, planets making the sunapha anapha yoga are important but the rashi lord but the rashi lord is also equally important so even if you have a planet in second to moon that makes a sunapha yoga still in that case the lord of the rashi which is falling in the second to moon or even if there is no sunapha yoga even in that case the lord of the rashi which is in second from moon is very important 
Now, first of all, understand the Sunofa Yoga. As we know that moon controls the tides of ocean, the water bodies on earth. So, see, this is seen through another principle of Toyakshay and etc. Toyakshay principle. The water of the ocean is increasing or decreasing as per the placement of moon is seen through the principle of Toyakshay. That is another principle I am not covering in this particular video. But to understand the Sunfa Yoga and the Sanafa Yoga, this is important that we understand this. Sunafa, according to me, is the rising waters, rising wave or rising ocean. And Anafa tells to moon is the low wave, the decreasing water, the settling down water. The Sunafa house is the second house from moon indicates the goodness the support, the resources, and the hidden talents that the native is having. Planet in the second house to moon gives traits, attributes, and qualities related to himself, to the native. This is that particular area which one should focus on to grow in life. So for an example, you say second from moon is Mercury, then communication, business, keeping logbook of interactions with people, expenditure, etc. is something that one should focus on, is something that helps one in two in this life to uh, not only using the quality of this planet but not using this quality of this planet is also very detrimental. So basically when you want opulence, affluence, success in life, this is the planet that you have to follow. And if you have no planet in the second house from moon, then it is the second lord from moon who's, and the Rashi in the second house from moon whose nature, quality, behavior, attributes you have to follow to become successful in life and have affluence and influence in life. And this is the uh, second Lord from Moon, which actually decides how much successful, rich, uh, prestigious, loved by people you will be in the society. Right. So this have to be very carefully judged. When Venus is in the second house, from moon, then one have to have pure relationship with woman. Should not have uh, bad thoughts regarding woman if they want to succeed in life. I am telling you the path of success, right? You can go other way around and uh, can deprive yourself from success, right? And Venus also indicates standing with your community, helping the people who have helped you. Uh, you know, things such as NGO and selflessly helping people is also indicated by Venus. And along with that, standing by your supporters, having a team and company around you is also indicated by Venus as well. Right. So uh, this is another major point with Venus. When Mars is in the second house from moon, uh, use your aggression properly and wisely. Being conscious about uh, which responsibility to take and which one to say no to. Using your energy, power, influence in a proper way, not hurrying up, having patience before taking a decision and thinking properly and rationally before you decide to do anything or uh, speaking 
avoiding fights, litigations, etc. is what Mars teaches you. When Jupiter is in the second house from moon, the way of dharma, following your religion, following the thoughts of your religion, being a religious person, right? uh, treating the whole world as your own family, not harming others, not doing bad to others is something that is highly recommended. And when Saturn is in the second from moon, then your hard work, not telling your secrets, keeping your resources hidden, uh, trying to connect with masses, not creating things which are high quality, but creating things for common man is the key to success and is the key for achievement in life. As second house indicates your uh, mental progress throughout the life, second house from moon indicates the way and the path that you should take for success and the pitfalls and the issues that you should avoid. It indicates the level of affluence, influence, and expansion that you can have into this life. And along with this, it also have a, it also indicates that lingering thoughts or those ideas which are always lingering in your mind. It is a type of you know, standard, right? So when like when Saturn is in the second house from Moon. Your standard in judging anyone is how much they can contribute you or how much work they do. When Jupiter is in the second house from moon, your standards of judging anyone is about, uh, is regarding how religious they are and how much devoted they are to their family and etc. Right. So it also decides your standards what you find good in people and what you don't find good in people. It also talks about the riches that one is supposed to have. It also talks about fortunes and it also talks about most prominent members in the family and also talks about those people, those events and those incidents which have a great influence and emphasis on your mind and that molds your way of thinking and your behavior. Now this 12th house from moon indicates those things that you have to ignore or let go of for your success, right? This is anafa. Things that you have to jump over or things which will decline with your progress. These are the sacrifices that you have to make, you know? So when Mercury is in 12th house from moon. Now see, classically speaking, classics don't attribute any bad result to this planet. But that is not true, I think. For an example, those having Mercury in 12th house to moon only progress and succeed in life when they stop learning. By the time they are in, they are learning, they are completing their education, success, stability in their life is difficult. When Venus is in the 12th house to moon, then getting into relationships, being casual, enjoying, traveling, you know, this, this enjoyment focused approach in life is something that they have to sacrifice for their success. When Mars is in the 12th house from moon, this anger, aggression, short temper taking decisions quickly is something that they should avoid or jump over if they want success for jupiter religious neutrality not being too orthodox not being too clinging to with an idea or with an approach is something that they have to leave or that they have to have in their nature and when saturn is in the 12th house then the Thoughts of this thing is of my standard, this thing is not of my standards, judging people, uh, you know, uh, feeling a distance with people, feeling that someone is too downtrodden or too high class, or all of these concepts of, you know, all of these concepts of pelagrism and Jordis, one have to leave if they want to succeed in life. Also, not only this particular planet, but if there is no planet in 12th to moon, then you have to take the lot of the Rashi and the Signification of the Rashi to know about those particular things that you have to ignore or that you have to get over if you want to succeed in life. 
Along with this, the planet in the 12th house from moon or the 12th lord from moon indicates how strong is your determination or will regarding something. If this 12th lord from moon is weak, then this is a person who is not much willed or determined to do something. And he keeps on changing his ideas and thoughts very quickly. Whereas those people who have 12th lord from their moon quite strong are the determined ones who don't change their thought or their thinking pattern based on the advices of others. Also the 12th Lord from Moon indicates, you know, this is this 12th Lord from Moon or planet and the 12th house from Moon indicate those things and circumstances which come to your life as a shock, which shake you from inside and which change your outlook towards the society and at the world, this indicates the greatest loss of your life, right? So you say if Venus is in the 12th house from moon or Venus is the 12th Lord from moon, then it is a loss of a particular relationship, which is very life changing for the natives. And a loss of a relationship is something, you know, very, very transformative or something which have much impact on someone's mind, which, uh, you know, makes one go into a depression kind of scenario and changes one greatly right this is the this is the biggest influence you say or the biggest hit on your mind uh, you know that is what is indicated by the 12th house from moon so these two houses from moon are basically very strong this 12th house from moon also indicates your ability to take challenges head on indicates the areas that you can win the areas that you can succeed, right? So second from moon is your approach for success and 12th from moon is the area where you will succeed, right? So both of them works simultaneously. 12th from moon also indicate all of those things which happen in background. For an example, you say 12th from moon is Mars. Then any opportunity, then, you know, major opportunities that you are getting in life, you are getting because someone else refused to do it. Right, this is what 12th from moon indicates and also 12th from moon is the most neglected area of your life, most neglected facet of your personality, which generally becomes your weakness and which you should avoid. When planets are both in the second and the 12th house of the moon, then once again, the result of the Anufa and the Sunfa should be told separately. Right, the result of Anfa for the signification of the planet in second to moon and the result of Anfa with respect to the signification of the planet in twelfth to moon. But there is one speciality having moon hemmed in with planets that is for such people the life generally moves with uh, you know like uh, with, with this uh, Durudhara combination planets both in second and twelfth to moon. The thing is, you know, it is the life works on few principles. Such people, uh, you know, like they are the people who have two happy areas in life for that example, you say. So at one point of time, these two happy areas are friends and profession. Now, this person gets married. Only two areas in his life can be happiness producing for him other areas will not be so what will happen after marriage if his marital life is happy then either of profession or friendship will suffer or if the friendship and profession is not suffering then his marital life will suffer so basically such people having planets in both the second and twelfth to moon have a very limited you know very limited set of things very limited set of uh, you know, events which lead them to happiness. And the major issue is when one thing goes bad, another thing goes good. So in their life, overall happiness, overall prosperity, overall satisfaction is a type of mirage. And this overall, <clears throat> this overall thing basically never happens for them is what I have particularly noticed. In this example, you have, you should remember that when planets in 12th house from moon is a malefic, 
you know it is a malefic planet or the lord of the rashi is malefic if the, there is no planets then you know to get over a loss to get over a shock to move move on is very difficult whereas if there are malefics in the second house from moon then you know uh, getting accustomed to something new accepting changes accepting the new way of anything tends to become difficult now you remember even in the case of durudhara yoga though bad results are not prominently told for durudhara yoga but still but still in the case of durudhara yoga when the planets are both in the second house and 12th house from moon if they are benefits benefic planets in second and 12th to moon then it is good otherwise it is bad malefics create those particular problems that i have just mentioned right sometimes ago now there is one more point that you have to understand when planets are in the second house from moon it indicates that one have to earn money on their own so basically there is no one to help them generally they don't get much wealth in inheritance or from their family and uh, earning of money their professional life and everything they have to independently take care of even this tends to become a combination for love marriage generally when you have a sunfa yoga planet in second house from moon then you have to do everything on your own right so earn money on your own you don't get any inheritance or any type of wealth from parents you also have to search your spouse yourself as uh, uh, you know parents are not able to either find or are not interested in finding a spouse for you you know so the person have to do any everything on their own also when there is planet in second house from moon that is uh, sunfa yoga such person are street smart they are very street smart they are very clever it is a true rahu manifestation where the person can change his colors with you know when the person will change his colors uh, in front of people when the person will change his words will change his ideas and everything based on the situation these are people who are very street smart and clever and who can change everything for their benefits right so a kind of a you know show off type of a people who become very religious in front of a teacher and become very bad in front of someone who you know likes such people right so they are basically people who live multiple types of personalities right it generally indicates someone who is faking to be you know be someone right and uh, uh, this sunfa yoga planet in the second house from moon also give fame and wealth right so specifically uh, if there is now this particular two result fame and wealth if there is a planet in second house from moon then you are getting fame because of that planet in the fields of that planet and you are getting wealth because of that planet also in the field of that planet also for an example planet in second from moon is the jupiter mercury or the fifth lord or planet in second from moon is somehow connected to the fifth house by aspect or etc then you are earning fame because of your students you are earning fame because of uh, distributing knowledge and uh, you are also earning wealth through the same right and if there are no planets in the second house from moon then the rashi occupied by the second lord from moon uh, the rashi the house is aspected by the second lord from moon etc designs the areas where one can get famous and the and those areas through which one earns wealth for an example if in a horoscope moon is in cancer second lord from moon is uh, second house from moon is leo leo is empty so you have to take the lord of leo that is sun now this sun is situated with jupiter that means one will earn wealth through teaching proper uh, teaching distributing knowledge and other jupiterian fields right with earn money while working with finances being a religious teacher etc etc now people who have planets in 12th from moon that is people born in anfa yoga 
they are very influential and powerful people they are those people who have influence and power in society many people follow him they are like leaders right so they can be great leaders or they can be low level leaders but at one level or another level they are at leaders generally in these cases they are at ceo or managerial position in their profession also making them a leader right they have good name fame status and authority they have high contacts and high links and they are those people who can get your work done using their authority influence and other things people having planets in 12th from moon are good natured calm people who generally don't think bad of others and whomever they love they dedicate their lives for the betterment of those people they generally don't tell lie and they are very clear hearted people also planet in 12th from moon is gives health so basically in case of any health problem the first remedy that you should do which should be related to the planet which is in the 12th house from moon and if there is no planet in 12th house from moon then the remedy should be accord according to the lord which is in the 12th house which is the which is lording the 12th house from the moon right for health related issues gemstone of this planet who is in the 12th house from moon or who lords the 12th house from moon should be highly recommended starting of you know starting of taking medication in the hora of this planet or on the weekday of this planet which is connected to the 12th house from moon is highly recommended right and uh, sexual pleasure what one likes sexually is also indicated by the 12th lord from moon importantly say what one enjoys in a relationship is also indicated by the 12th lord from moon right so 12th lord from moon is mercury one enjoys talking with the spouse partner 12th lord from moon is venus then one likes the you know touching etc things 12th lord from or 12th lord from moon or 12th from moon is mars then one likes you know the action uh action going together hiking spending time together bungee jumping etc such actions together they enjoy etc et when jupiter is jupiter is having connection with 12th from moon then in that particular scenario you know uh, like doing religious things together keeping promises etc is what people like and so on and so forth right also planet in 12th house from moon or the 12th lord from moon indicates the type of colors that the colors that are very favorable for you so wearing clothes of this particular color painting your walls with this particular color is very auspicious and uh, planet in 12th from moon decides how disturbed the mind is or otherwise so generally i have seen this sunfa yoga people sorry anfa yoga people people who are having planets in 12th from moon are generally those people who remain much disturbed in their life who keeps on thinking a lot and for them everyone's problem is their own problem now people who have planets in both second and 12th house from moon and because we have dealt with second house and 12th house separately also this drudara yoga planet in second house and 12th house from moon should be seen for only those who have planets in both these houses otherwise the separate result for sunfa house and the separate result for anfa house should be told people having this drudara yoga planets in both second and 12th house from moon right so first of all people having planet in both second and 12th to moon having durdara yoga they are generally happy go lucky people <clears throat> they are so proud about each and every of their achievement that their happiness is you know worth looking at they are also very sensual and it generally general i am saying it generally indicates men and women of loose morals 
such people are wealthy also and they get much wealth through inheritance through their parents etc much un unearned wealth through their parents stock markets investments etc they get they have good vehicles and conveniences in life they have faithful servants and employees such people are generally into business or if they are not into business they should go into business and they will become very successful in business as well now after this the major thing is planet not in the second house or 12th house from moon this is known as kama drum yoga much dreaded people fear it a lot and that i think is unnecessary and baseless fear and thinking however it tends to come with some issues but classics of astrology tell you that one born in kamudram yoga even being even if he is the son of a king he will become very poor he will become a miser he will become a beggar this is not true at all thank you <laughs> uh, planets not in the second house and 12th house from moon that is the absence of sunfa anfa or dudhara yoga leads to kamudram yoga first of all the research bit in this video was that even there is no planet making sunfa or anfa but still taking the lord of these particular houses which are designated for making sunfa and anfa yoga a lot of predictions can be made should be made now with this kamudram yoga i will want to point i will want to point something that abilasha always talks about that people born in kamudram yoga generally have a hard working mother generally have a working mother and generally indicates a scenario where the mother have to take on the task of father mother becomes so learning member of the family and mother have to go through a lot of suffering this abilasha tells this and this i have also found very true in experience as well along with this as it is told that kamudram yoga person will be pauper will be beggar etc this result is true but not with parashari kamudram yoga this is true with jaimini kamudram yoga that i will talk after this regarding parashari kamudram yoga one thing you need to understand there are three four results that i have noticed generally first of all planets in no side of moon neither in the second nor in the 12th side of moon or only sun rahu ketu which is not considered as planets making sunfa anfa or dudhara yoga in second or 12th house from moon leads to kamudram yoga such people have to go through great monetary loss that is for sure now it does not mean that they will become beggar or something like that but a huge monetary loss on account of trusting someone who was not trustworthy or putting your money into a particular type of property that have no future or a bad investment and loss of huge money through that bad investment is something that i have noticed along with this such people having kamudram yoga are generally loners either they have such nature that no one wants to have a friendship or relationship with them or they by choice don't want to live with people either way such people are loners loner because their standards their thinking does not match with others and not only friends but even they are generally separated have different views than even their own family members no one understand them and because of this particular reason they don't have good friendship etc good friendship etc kind of a scenario they don't have in life generally so they are forced to live alone also it indicates those people who are you know who are not paid attention to and generally it is an indicative you know like uh, you listen to someone that oh 
you know this happened with that guy and you come into a shock you know like oh he was into our school but you know post school we none of us had any connection with him where he went none of us know this is came from yoga person so they are loner they have to live alone this is 80% of our time this is by choice because their thinking their thoughts are so high and they are so advanced that you know people generally cannot understand them along with this you know uh kemadram yoga certainly comes with unnecessary struggle kemadram yoga certainly comes with issues where the native is not able to get those things easily which others will get quite easily even to get normal and common things which everyone gets very easily they have to struggle a lot and they have to try multiple times all right this is what i have personally noticed along with this sometimes you know such people i will say is hunger sorry <laughs> hunger is the wrong word sometimes such people are you know humble so humble that they do not understand that this is not their work this is someone else's work kemadram yoga generally indicates someone who is the boss of the company but will do you know will even fetch water for himself will carry his bag not knowing that his time is more important and by doing this petty things he is actually losing on his time but he is humble and is humble in a negative sense in such a negative sense that uh, you know he takes every responsibility right like generally kemadram yoga people to those they love they cannot say no and because of this issue that they cannot say no to people they land into circumstances and situations which are not very favorable and which lands them into uncalled responsibilities which further you know take up a lot of their time because of which they cannot fulfill their other tasks and which tends to become an issue right so this is something that i have uh, noticed with kemadrumi yoga now this particular result of someone having kemadrum yoga will be bankrupt will lose all his money will become poor beggar is not true with the kemadrum yoga of parashar or traditional kemadrum yoga but is true with jaimini's kemadrum yoga the kemadrum yoga of jaimini now jaimini mentions a kemadrum yoga and jaimini tells if there is equal number of malefics in second house and eighth house then it is a kemadrum yoga equal number of malefics mean one malefic in the second house one in the eighth house one malefic in the third one no, two malefic in the second house two malefic in the eighth house etc in this case if there is second house and eighth house goes into a rahu ketu axis remember that in gemini astrology ketu is a benefic planet now it can be that there are three planets in the second house two of which are malefics and two planets in the eighth house both of them are malefics this also constitute for a kemadrum yoga gemini kemadrum yoga because the number of malefics is equal now you say there is one planet in the second house that is a malefic and one planet in the eighth house that is not malefic then because the planet in the eighth house is not malefic it does not make a gemini kemadrum yoga so basically equal number of natural malefic planets in the second house and eighth house in gemini astrology is a kemadrum yoga and this should be checked from arur lagna this should be checked from atmakarak and this should be checked from the navamsha occupied by atmakarak 
Now, as you know, I have a research that tells uh, the, that the calculation of Atamkarak should be done based on minutes and not based on degrees. That is based on the real injunctions of say Jaimini and Jaimini Sutras. Somehow nowadays people don't possess good knowledge of Sanskrit. So Atmakarak is calculated based on degrees, but that is very unfortunate and wrong. Right. This particular Jaimini came through yoga from Arul Lagna, Atmakarak, and the Navamsha occupied by Atmakarak is something that makes one go bankrupt. And uh, for this Jaimini uh, Kemagdrum Yoga, there is no cancellation. So the result happens for sure. Whereas for the normal Kemagdrum Yoga, where no planets in second house and twelfth house from moon makes a Kemagdrum Yoga, there are many cancellations. If there is any planet in fourth, seventh or tenth house or with moon, then the normal Parashari Kemagdrum Yoga will not be applicable. If there is planets in 1, 4, 7, 10 from the ascendant, then Parashari Kemadrum Yoga will not be applicable. And if there is any planet conjoined with moon in Navamsha, then also the normal Jaimini normal Parashari Kemadrum Yoga will not be applicable. It will be cancelled. But for Jaimini Kemadrum Yoga, the result is permanent. It never gets cancelled. And in real life practice, you find this to be true and much effective. So this is the Kemadrum Yoga that makes one lose all their money and go bankrupt. And normal Kemadrum Yoga, that is Parashari Kemadrum Yoga, where planets in no planets in second and twelfth from moon makes a Kemadrum Yoga is wrongly misunderstood. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Have a good day.